Another song, right? Would somebody like to take the offering up at this time? Anybody at all? Yeah, I can find it. 434. What was it? 434. 434. Very good. You want to bless the offering, brother? Amen. Amen.
Aren't you glad you can know that? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You glad you're in God's house this evening? Amen. Amen. Can't think of a better place to be, Brother Charlie, can you? Now what excites me more than ever, you've heard me say this time and time again, one of these days, Gary, we're going to a place where there ain't going to be no sorrow. Amen. Amen. Ain't going to be no more pain. That right there, our mother ought to get us a shout Amen. for the Lord. Amen. 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 A lot of things we ought to be a shouting for the Lord, but that ought to that ought to get her get her far hot. Before I ain't getting warmed up or something wrong, amen. God love him tonight, and I love each and every one of you this evening. Glad to be in the church with you. Anybody else got a testimony they'd like to share with us before we get ready to go to another song? I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds. Amen. 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 It's a good thing we don't know, Charlie. Good thing we don't know. Somebody else? Got a testimony or something on their mind they want to say? Yeah, I'd like to know who holds my hand. Yeah. 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 Amen. I know where he's going to take me one of these days. Amen. And I love him tonight. And I just praise him for everything he's done in my life. And I thank him. Amen. Hey, amen. God bless you, sis. Somebody else? Amen. 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 Someone else? I want to say to make the Lord save and give praise. I love my Lord, my God, my Savior. He's my King. He's all at the risk. You know, there's nothing without God. You know, there's there's no life without God. That's right. I thank God to see me. Where his wonderful salvation, salvation, his wonderful grace that keeps us up every day. Praise his holy name, you know. I can't pitch myself now at being without God. You know, I, I don't want to be without God. Amen. I always have God in my life, you know, uh, directing me and showing me his, his way. Praise God. Forget the things of the world. They're nothing, you know? Yep. They're nothing out there anymore. That's you know, right. It's just uh, sinful things. You know, everywhere you look, there's sinful things today. Right. You know, I, I'm glad God took that out of my heart. I give God praise for saving my soul. Amen. Keeping me up on the solid rock. Yes. The, the solid foundation. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that died for us on the cross of hell. Amen. 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 Ever wonderful life. Praise God. Amen. Praise our Savior. Amen. Do not be ashamed to praise our Savior. Right. Amen. 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 Come on, brother. It's keeping grace. It's wonderful mercy every day that He shows me. Praise God. Amen. Praise nothing. You know, it's God that lives in me. Praise God that He does. I thank Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 God bless you. Praise God bless God. you. Somebody else? Yes. Another song picked out? Yeah. 422. Four? You ever heard that one before? No, I've never heard that, and that's a new one. Open up your hymn books to 422. Can you play that one? <laughs> Sit back and listen, and we're going to say good <laughs>
Somebody got a testimony they want to share with us this evening. How about a prayer request? Okay. Somebody must have said that she, she couldn't come like us. She had a little bit of headaches, and she said we'd pray for her. Okay, okay. Remember that request? Brother Charlie? Remember my cousin. 
Okay, remember that request. Anyone else? Okay, remember that request. Anyone else? Yeah, I remember my daughter tomorrow. She goes, she goes to school up to uh, Columbus. And remember them when I offer to travel from back tomorrow. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, remember that request. Anyone else? All right, remember that request. Remember Brother Johnny's request. Okay, remember that request. Talk to Susie. Okay, remember that request. Talk to my wife about quarter after five. There's about 50 miles the other side of Parkersburg. So remember them in your prayers. Remember me and Johnny's. We go to Columbus tomorrow. And we're going to head for Tennessee about midnight, tomorrow night, somewhere around there. Remember us for travel mostly. Anyone else? Okay, remember his request. Anyone else? Pray for his sister Rita Barnett. She is in the hospital at Adena. They've done a bunch of tests and do a stress test on her tomorrow, looking for some answers to come from her. Okay, remember his request. Anyone else? Okay, remember my family, uh, especially for salvation. Uh, they all have things going on in their lives and they really need the Lord. You can't tell them that. They will listen to me. Um, remember, Kate, he's had an awful lot of pain in his shoulder because that surgery that he had, it's all busted up again. He has to have the surgery redone. <coughs> he's just in a tremendous amount of pain. So remember him. Okay, remember all these requests. Sure, we all got unspoken request by lifting hand. Brother Charlie, you want to lead us out, brother? Father, we thank you for this privilege to be given to us as the sons of the Father. We thank you for all the blessings that you allow us to offer us.
evening. Anyone? You got a song like Sissy? Go, Dave. Rejoice, not because you have great riches, but rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. I thought that I had died and gone to heaven. I stood just outside the eastern gate. The man from within said, Have you been born again? Is your name written in the book of life? Please search that book again. I thought my name was there. I went to church on Sunday, though I never knelt in prayer. Please search that book again. It's too late now, I know. Please search that book again before you make me go. I told him all the deeds that I had done. I told him all the trophies I had won. But the man said to me, Have you been set free? Is your name written in the book of life? Please search that book again. I thought my name was there. I went to church on Sunday. Though I never knelt in prayer. Please search that book again. It's too late now, I know. Please search that book again before you make me go. And then he turned and left me standing there. I knew it was too late now for prayer. Oh, my sinner friend, if you would enter in, your name must be written in the book of life. Please search that book again. I thought my name was there. I went to church on Sunday, though I never knelt in prayer. Please search that book again. It's too late now, I know. Please search that book again before you make me go. You know, that song was made from a man's dream. I would hate to be in that condition that I'd be standing there wanting to enter in 
and my name's not on the book. I'm glad that my name is on my Lord's book tonight. And I want to keep it there because I do want to go to heaven. I have a lot of loved ones up there to be with again. But most of all, I want to see my Jesus. I want to take and shake his hand and thank him for everything he's done for me. And you know, he's done a lot for me or I wouldn't be here tonight if he hadn't. It's all been him. Nobody else could have done what my Lord has done for me. I love him tonight. And I just praise him and thank him for everything. Somebody else? They want it all. I was reminded of the first scripture in Philippians uh, 4, 4 uh, 3 and 4, which reads, And I treat thee also, true, your fellow, fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, which came up also, and with other, other of my fellow laborers. Whose name are written in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I again I say rejoice. We need to rejoice. We've got a new name. Amen. 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 Someone else? Got a song? Testimony on your heart? I mean, just because you testified once, you can testify again. Or three or four times. Just mind the Lord. Bless you. you know, I like uh, Exodus uh, 23 and 25 when it says, it says, And he shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. You know, the Lord, those that serve the Lord, Amen. And believe in God, you know, God provides for you, takes care of them, takes the sickness away. And if we don't turn the country in the world, don't turn God. He would take the sin sickness away, you know? He would take it away from right. And he would, they would be saved. Amen. Pray for our new sound person back there. Push on the push the slider up on C D. Call me the mansions bright, a 
across the sea, where loved ones wait and crowns are given, and the hills of home start calling me. This house of flesh is but a prison, bars of bone. Oh, my soul, but the doors of clay are gonna burst wide open. When the angel said, my spirit free, I'll take my flight like a mighty eagle. When the hills of home start calling me. I see loved ones over yonder, tears are gone, and hearts are free, and from the throne my Savior beckons, and the heels of Bars of bone, oh my soul. But the doors of clay were gonna burst wide open when the angel said, My spirit free. I'll take my flight like a mighty eagle when the hills of home start calling me. I'll take my flight like a mighty eagle when the hills of Johnny was saying there, I could relate to Johnny, what some of that, what you were saying. I left out of here on a Friday night. I'd hit Cincinnati about midnight. It'd been quite a few years ago, back when you still had to go down through town. I remember getting off the exit, making the circle. I don't know if any of you know where a 38 truck stop is there. You're south of Cincinnati, south of town. I woke up that night, right again the guardrail. Don't remember a thing, Brother Gary, going through town. God had to be watching over us. Amen. I think he had a plan for us, Johnny. But I don't remember a thing going through town. And it was about midnight when I hit town. Should have been full of traffic. I got again the guardrail and I got out of the truck. I sat there probably for 20 minutes, half hour. I just know the law was coming. I wasn't no way I could have got down through there if I was running over somebody. But I sat there, nobody come. Well, no scratches on the truck, so I took off again. But I want to thank God for even watching over us back then. I love Him. I love each and every one of you. I love church and church tonight. Someone else got testimony on your heart. If all hearts clear, then I ask you to stand so we call our pastor.
Amen. I, I long for the day that I hear uh, my Savior beckon. I honestly do. Whether, uh, I don't, it's not that I don't like this life. It's I don't like this world. There's a difference there. I do love my wife and my children and, and, the, and the church. I do love the church. But there are days I just want to go home. And I know that you can relate to that statement today with all the things that we see uh, uh, going on around us today, all the hurting. Uh, go back to Jeremiah t tonight, chapter 13. And, and uh, again, after not preaching in Jeremiah for a couple of years, probably two times in the same day. But again, this is what God has laid on my heart and it's been on it uh, actually the since before I preached this morning, but I knew this morning, and, uh, you know, I knew what I needed to preach, but God also laid this on my heart early this morning uh, as we were up and, and studying and praying and getting ready for the services today. Just one verse, Jeremiah 13 and 23. And I, I realize you might say tonight, Richard, what in the world would that have to do with you and I today? And uh, I, I've been questioning God the same way today. But listen what this one verse says. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? That, that may, then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Father, I thank you today for your mercy and for your grace. I thank you, God, for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. All I ask tonight, God, that you use your servant for your glory and your honor and your praise. Father, that you would feed us from your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. The people were kind of asking questions about God. You know, where is God? Can God save is God gone? What all of these different things uh, they were blaming on their uh, uh, their problems on God. And uh, the writer here, as he's writing down again, I, I believe that all Scripture is God breathed. So I believe that God uh, instructed Jeremiah to write this. He said, "Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leopard his spots, that ye may also then, if that's possible, is what he's saying." If the, if the Ethiopian can change his skin, if the leopard can change his spots, then, listen what he said, then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Now, we uh, in our society today, there has been a lot of, of talk in my 50, almost 52 years on this earth, and more so, I guess we would say in the last 30 years, we hear always talk about change. Right? We're going to change things. When we get in office, we're going to change things. When I'm down there, things are going to be different. We live in a world that is instead of getting better, it's getting worse. Amen. We all can agree on that. That's easily to, to discern. Well, all you got to do is pick up the newspaper. I, I saw a thing uh, yesterday, I believe it was, uh, that since the last school shooting where there was several killed down there in Florida, and they're talking about how that we need gun control is a big issue, there, there has been 40, over 4,800, I believe it was 4,830 overdose deaths in the United States since that time. If the, if the Ethan Open can change the color of his skin, or if the leopard can change his spots, then you ought to be able to change uh, the way that you treat men, how you act. Then you ought to be able to do good instead of doing evil. The problem with that today is, I know and you know, I, I realize that in, there is technology out there today that a black man can go into the hospital and, and they can bleach his skin white and... and but you know, inside he's still a black man. There are places that all of that stuff can't get to. I mean, you may change part of it. You may change the outside. If the leopard could change his spots, 
Amen. You might see a beautiful yellow cat. He may look more, a little bit more like a lion, but inside he'd still be a leopard. We live in a world, a society today that says all you've got to do is to turn over a new leaf. All you've got to do is to take on a positive attitude. Amen. I'm here to tell you today, we need a life changer. We don't need a spot changer. We don't need to change the color of a skin. Amen. We need a heart transplant. Amen. God told him, he said, he said, if you'll come to me, he said, I'll take that old heart, stony heart out of you, and I'll put in a heart of flesh and a heart of love. I, I, I question sometimes, even in my own life, especially in our churches, in our society today, amen, how the men, amen, listen, tell us how much they love God, amen, but yet they never reach out to the world, how much that they pray, amen, listen, for people to get saved, but yet how much, how, how the lack of effort that is put behind their prayers, I wonder where our hearts at today. Amen. I said, especially mine, when I started that, I hope you, I hope you call on to that. I realize today it changes hard. But I tell you, there's only one thing that changes man. That's the spirit of the living God. If we want better, amen, if we want better, again, I remember sitting right here on the edge of this pew. Brother Norman, if I remember, I sat exactly right there. It seemed like Sister Susie was behind me. Amen. I think Charlie might have been along right here. That's about where he sits during those kind of meetings. And Brother Dave said at one time we had it great here at this church. Amen. And we want it back. Amen. My, my question today, my friend, have we changed our mind? Have we changed our heart? Do we really desire to see that God, the, the glory of God to settle not only on Puritan Free Will Baptist Church, but on Vinton County? Now think about all the different things that are going on in all the surrounding counties. I, I mean, from where we are, we're not far. Amen. Listen, from Meigs County, we're not far from Jackson County. Uh, we're not that far from Hawking County. We're not that far from Ross County in the area that we live in today. We're not far that, that, we're, that the, uh, the impact of this church, uh, amen, can reach out to people that live in different counties. Uh, we're not far. And I realize today we're doing uh, some missionary work that we're reaching out. We're blessing uh, the children's home and the Hope Center uh, down in Tennessee. Uh, and we always take up the offering for Brother Albert, amen, that is in the Philippines. And we uh, bless those other missionaries that come in. Uh, uh, but I want you to understand something today, my friend. We need the fire of God burning brighter today than it ever has. Amen. All right, preacher. You keep telling us what we need. How do we get it? <laughs> oh my. Here we go. Seems a little bit like a repeat of this morning. Through prayer and fasting and self-devotion. Amen. Let me question you again. How much time are you spending alone with God? Amen. I'm not talking about, amen, thinking about God down through the day. Oh, preacher, I constantly think about God. Amen. I want you to know something. Uh, uh, listen, spending time with God is not a passing thought. Amen. Spending time with a God is when you sit still. Amen. Listen, and you speak to God and you allow God to speak to you. Amen, I'm telling today, my friend, people look at me and they say, Preacher, amen, I don't know what you're talking about. God has never spoke to me. I'm going to tell you, my friend, if you're one of those individuals, there's two things that you need to do. Number one, you need to be still. Amen, then allow God to speak. You remember sometimes when our kids would get excited, maybe something has scared them, and they're trying to come in and tell us what has happened and what's going on, and finally we just have to stop them say, shh, be quiet and calm them down. Sometimes God needs to just calm us down. Amen. That he might speak back to us. That we might hear from the good things of God. I'm telling you today upon the authority of God's word that the God of days of revival has not changed. The word of God has not changed. 
the Holy Ghost job on this earth, it has not changed, my friend. Amen. See, it's still not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Listen, it's still God's will for your life. Amen. That thy soul prosper. Amen. Hey, I realize today that our soul is different, amen, than our body. Sometimes we may suffer persecution, but that doesn't mean that our soul can't rejoice in God. Because let me tell you something. These fingers that we see and these hands and these arms and these feet, that's really not who we are. Amen? What changes these and what this does is what the inward man is, what the soul of man. Amen? The heart of man again is deceitfully wicked. wicked. Who can know it? He said, like Jeremiah said, he told Jeremiah, he said, I the Lord. I the Lord. You see, God knows what we want. He knows what we have need of. He said, but if you ask, you receive. If you'll seek, you'll find. If you'll knock, it'll be open unto you. I could stand up here tonight, night and I could give you scriptures on things that what God said He would do. Amen. But my question to you tonight is, what are you going to do about it today? Hey, listen to me, my friend. Hey, man, if the house is on fire, what are you going to do about it? Hey, man, listen, if the roads are of ice and, hey, man, and the state troopers saying, hey, man, you can go. I remember mornings about, and not too long ago, they looked at us and said, if you leave this lot in your truck, brother, you're leaving at your own risk. They were telling you, Doug, if you want to go, we're not going to stop you. If you go, we're not responsible. I want you to understand something today, my friend. Hey, man, listen, God does us the same way. He allows us that rope. Amen. Listen, if you have it, he allows us that slack that we can get out there. Hey, but I want you to understand. Amen. Listen, that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. If you're going to do something for the right reason, for the right glory, for the right honor, for the right name, of the, God will be there among it today. Amen. If we're trying to build a church, just to say we've rebuilt the church back to what it used to be. We're doing it for the wrong reason. Let me tell you why I do what I, what I do. I, I get accused of a lot of things sometimes. And I'm like, I just I'm like, you don't know my heart. You know why I do what I do? You know why I go when I'm tired and I don't feel like it? Why I go when I'm sick? I'll be honest, your sister Susie told me the other day, that, that, uh, that she was going to be gone all week and I'd have, I'd have to leave the singing. I'm like, I just need the singing, leave the preaching. I ain't going to have a voice. You hear what I got? You see, God supplies. Because I know I needed help. I knew that I needed strength. I could not get through this day and lead the singing and lead the preaching. Amen. Listen, I, I preached along this morning. Facebook cut Rhonda off. <laughs> amen. I don't know why all that happened, but amen. I want you to understand something today. Amen. When we are getting in there for the right purpose, the reason that I do what I do is because there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And all that die without Christ, all that die without the blood, all that die without the name written in the Lamb Book of Life, descend into a lake of fire called hell today. That's why. That's why I don't, don't compromise on the Word of God. That's why today that we, we go and we push. That's why we sing. I realize today, man, I, I don't do as much. I, I Honestly, I don't do as much as I did five years ago. Hey, man, I, got, I honestly, this body gets tired. I mean, sometimes you've got to step back. And, but you know what? You I mean, once you step back and you rest a little bit, you know what you do? I was down there helping Rich yesterday, and we were uh, trying to tear down a, a, a big shed. And it had those corrugated tin on it that had been put on with neoprene nails. And a lot of it was so old and rusted. I mean, you, when you, if you retch up and you hit it with something, you about put the two before through it. But I remember there'd be a guy would go over and I'd pick up that two before and I'd push that big eight or ten foot two before and slam it against her. I'd do that about 15 or 20 times. You know what? I was out of breath. You know what I did? I set it down and I walked around and I waited a few minutes and I'd go back over and I'd hit it again. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if you got tired and you've caught your second wind, hit it again. Get back on board. Get on the firing line. Amen. Pray. Fast. Seek the face of God. Present your body as a sacrifice. You say, preacher, I ain't got much. Amen. The Bible tells me that little is much. When God is in it today, God doesn't need your 
abilities. He just needs you to be available. God can't use someone that's not available. When God got ready to use uh, uh, Jonah the prophet, he said, Jonah, I want you to go down to Nineveh. Jonah run the other way. Got ready, God got ready to anoint uh, Saul king of Israel. Amen. Saul, all the signs were there. He proved to him that he was going to, you know what? All of a sudden, Saul, when they went to look at him to anoint him king, he had ran and he had. I'm telling you today, my friend, if we ever needed to get back on the firing line for God and to make up the hedge, the gap, amen, listen, where the enemy has run through, amen, listen, in our military, our soldiers are taught, amen, listen, as that guy is going forth into the battle and he's carrying that flag, amen, if that fellow goes down, somebody else is to pick up that flag, amen, listen, and to carry it on in the battle, I'm telling you, we, what you want know that flag, amen, listen, right there, you know what this is, this is the standard, amen, that we fly under, that we live under, amen, the old red, white, and blue, that's the flag, that's the standard that our soldiers fight under, can I tell you today, this is the flag, this is our standard that you and I fight under, if there's ever a time that we need to wave the flag and give honor and glory to the God of our flag, it's Today! It's time. You can't change, but God can change you. Amen. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, for God giveth it freely on bridle at night. Again, you're as close to God as what you want to be because God said, If you'll draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. Why is it? And I have never figured this out. Why is it that it takes sickness to come in our life? The majority of the time, a storm has got to come in our life of some type for us to draw nigh to God. When the sun's shining and the flowers are blooming and the wind's blowing through the trees and the crops are growing and the harvest is coming on, why is it that we don't pray? It's when the winds, when the tornadoes come through and they tear down everything around us. It's when the waters of the flood that come up and take everything we've got away. It's when the cancer that comes in our body. It's when all, whatever the sickness, it's when the financial hardship hits us. Amen. That then we begin to cry out, Oh God, I need your help. Amen. Remember there's a song in our hymnal that says, I need thee. Oh Lord, I need thee. Every day and every hour, oh Lord, I need thee. If there's ever a time, church, that we need to be praying that and looking to God, the author, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Our faith begins in Him. Our faith ends in Him. If there's ever a time that we need to be praying, oh God, I need thee. It's today. It's today. It's right now. We've got a ladies retreat coming up next week. Let me say something. Ladies, if you're worried about the $15 that we said, forget about it. Get here. Amen. The material's already bought and paid for. Amen. We ain't got everything as far as the food, but we will. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying get here because this is to help you grow. Amen. It's to help draw you closer to God. Don't worry about the $15, amen? Because I'm telling you, it ain't going to bankrupt us if we don't get it. If you got it, give it. If you don't, get here anyhow and enjoy what God's got in store. We've got, I'm telling you, we can send off and get the greatest singers, amen, to get the best preachers in the country and come here for revival. But if we don't pray and fast and seek God today, but it ain't going to help nothing. We've got two wonderful ladies, some wonderful singers coming to put on this conference. Amen. They can't do it to empty pews. Amen. And here's the thing today. Amen. Listen, if I reach down in my pocket. Amen. Listen, I'm, I got a pocket knife right here. Amen, Brother Frank. I want this back after a while, all right? Amen. But if I read this out like this, Amen. If Brother Frank doesn't open that hand up, Amen. He can't receive what I'm about to give him. What are you saying? I'm saying, I'm saying, if God, you don't open up, Amen. Amen. God, now God ain't in 
Indian giver like I am. Amen. I remember you see, if Brother Frank gets his, it's useful. Amen. It'll peel potatoes. It'll skin a squirrel or a rabbit. Amen. It'll cut an apple if you can eat it. Amen. It'll peel a turnip right now, brother. I've peeled many a turnip with that thing. It's only as good as what you use it for. If all I ever did was carry it in my pocket, it's no good. Sometimes it's a pretty good fingernail file. <laughs> Amen. Pretty good about cleaning off money your fingernails. I do wash it. I just want everybody to know that I do clean it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just don't go from cleaning my fingernails and skinning squirrels, amen, to cutting up apples, all right? <laughs> I do run it underwater sometimes and scrub it up. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying all the tools are there. All the tools are there. My dad lived in Ohio for five years before I did. We'd come down to visit dad, and uh, dad would... All right, son, let's, let's go hunt. Let's go hunting a while. I didn't plan, come on plan on hunting. All my guns are at the house. You know what? Go in there and get any gun you want. There's ammunition for it. Everything you need, it's there. You know our Heavenly Father is that way? Yes. Whatever you need today, I told you earlier, I, I absolutely, I, I'm like, oh Lord, I'll never, how am I going to get through this day and lead to singing? I'm not a, I am not a great lead singer, amen. I do good to get through a song, right? Sometimes I miss the words up. But God provides, God gives strength. Jeremiah, go back to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah, I want you to go stand. I'm going to make you a watchman on the wall. You know what he said? I'm just a boy. Jeremiah was a young man when God called him to be a prophet. And he began to make excuses. You know what God said? He said, I, I, I knew you before you was in the womb. I knew you, listen to that, I knew you before, before you was in that womb, Jeremiah, I knew you. What's that mean? It means I knew about you. I knew you were coming. I knew the day, the hour, you, God knew God knew this night would be here. He knew that you and I would be workers together, like coal laborers together under the cause of the cross here in this building, this, this uh, body of believers. He knew it. He's put everything in place for us to rejoice and to build this church. I, I listen, I know what the enemy says. I know sometimes what them that supposedly are on our side say. But you see, I have took a look in the back of that book. Amen. I know who wins. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And that gives me the confidence to know that I can keep fighting. Yes. I was uh, uh, commented today on a status. I, I posted, I said, every day is the Lord's day. I said, but this is a day that's set aside for us to assemble together in the house of the Lord and to worship Him. Where will you be? And the fellow talked about, amen, how that many uh, have forgotten. I said, you know, the, uh, how the, the Bible's being fulfilled. I said, the love of many has waxed cold. I can't change. I can't, I can't make you love the Lord. I can't. The, the, the person that you love the most and appreciate the most is who, who you'll do the most for. For some people, it's turned into self. I, I've watched this in my life. I have saw men that absolutely, those saying, work their guts out toward retirement. Storing it up and laying it up. And they're not living long enough to enjoy it. I have saw that. I'm not saying it's wrong to store it up. I'm saying it's wrong to put your priorities in your storing up. I believe it's smart to plan for retirement. Amen? Amen. I hope to retire one of these days and sit back and rejoice. Get to enjoy it. Amen? I honestly do. But right now I go work. 
What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that our priorities have gotten away. Gotten away. I remember... I would to God that this young generation could experience an old time Holy Ghost revival like we used to have. Amen. Yes. Where hundreds were saved. Yes. Where revival didn't go three days. Or the revival did not go a week. It would go six to eight weeks. You know what? It wasn't... Uh, a, a year and a half ago or so, maybe two years ago now, that C.T. Townsend, they had a revival for about 10 or 12 weeks down there in North Carolina. Had like 1,300 saved. What does that mean, preacher? Why, why would you bring that up? To show you that God has not changed. How did that come? It did not come through C.T. Townsend. It came through the church of the living God. Now C.T. had a great big part in it. Revival today is having a part of it. Am I right? Amen. You know, when we fix a meal down here, and we, we, we ever how we do it, when we buy chicken, everybody brings in things. You know, you don't just eat out of the dish that you brought in. You eat out of the dish that somebody else labored in too. And that's what happens. And that's what happens in revival. We all rejoice at the labors of everybody else. Church, we need to get to laboring together. Amen. Together, together, together. Amen. Are you ready? How many really want it? I mean, you don't have to raise your hand. If you want to, you can. That's all right with me. How, how many really want it? Because here, it's not about raising our hands. It's not about shaking your head. It's about getting up and getting at it. it. Amen. God doesn't have any maids waiting on us hands and foot. There is no butler. Amen. Amen. You want something out of the Father's refrigerator, you've got to get up and go get it. You've got to put forth the effort. I realize in today's society, if you want fish, you can go down Long Don Silvers or Captain D's or wherever and you can get that fish. Amen. There ain't nothing like going out there and catching that fish, bring it home, clean it, and throw it in a skillet. Ain't that right, Charlie? Larry wouldn't know. He don't ever catch anything. Am I right, Jim? <laughs> Take me to the bank. I'm hung up again, right? <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing there. You know, we, we, we have a great church. I'll be honest with you. We do. We have, wonder, we have wonderful talent. We've got among us, we've got a, there's a firm foundation here. And for the life of me, I can't figure out what's holding it back. I honestly, I can't. Because I know who is for us. And I realize today there's more about to, there's more about worshiping God than running the aisles. Oh, but ain't it wonderful when you do get to run the aisles? Ain't it wonderful when the tears get to roll down your face? Ain't it wonderful when the hair is standing up on your head? Ain't it wonderful when the hair is standing up on your arms? <laughs> Amen. That everywhere, the power of God just lifts you up and encourages you. Ain't it wonderful? You know, that's what this place is for. Is when we lift Him up, He lifts us up. So let's make sure we're doing our part. We're bragging on not our church. We're bragging on the God of our church. Don't go out and tell people how wonderful a pastor you got in your line. Don't go wonder out and tell about how wonderful a choir you got in your line. There, there's better pastors, there's better choirs, there's better deacons, amen, somewhere. But what we do have that's the greatest thing is we have a wonderful Lord and Savior amen. that is worthy of all praise. Let's stand tonight, Sister Sandy, would you come? If anybody would like to pray for whatever reason, please come and do so. If you'd like to come and pray for revival, please come and do so.
How about uh, 180? Do that one. 